Hello everyone, Recap Cinema here, and today we're going to be talking about a science fiction film called Automata. If you like this video, make sure to press like and subscribe for more. In 2044, solar flares from the sun have killed 99.7% of the entire human population. As a result, humanity created robots called pilgrims to aid with their survival. To prevent the AI from betraying humans, we created two protocols that they must follow. One, they cannot harm any forms of life, and two, they cannot alter themselves. While doing a patrol in the subway station, police officer Wallace finds a robot hiding behind some plastic coverings. To his surprise, it was trying to repair itself against its protocols. What's even more shocking is that the robots clearly understood it was against the rules which humans have placed on them. The officer pulls out his gun while the robot begs to be spared. Jack works as an insurance investigator for the company Rock, which builds the robots for human society. He gets a case where the owner is complaining about how their robot has killed their dog, but the main character clearly demonstrates that the robot is unable to harm any life. Most likely, the owner killed his own pet in order to claim insurance money, as everyone is struggling in this dystopia to survive. After work, Jack goes back to his wife Rachel, who's pregnant with his child, but he doesn't seem too excited at the prospect, as the world is far from the perfect place to raise any children. At night, he gets a call from his company to investigate one of their robots that was shot in the beginning of the film by the police officer. He finds the prospect of the unit repairing itself preposterous and suggests that they should test the officer for drug use instead. The technician shows him that the robot was modified intensively with different parts from other units. Strangely, the one who modified the robot didn't erase the serial numbers from the other units, allowing Jack to investigate its origins. Jack goes to his boss Robert, telling him that the insurance would not cover the damages as the robot was illegally altered and without an owner. He also expresses to Robert that he wants to stay away from the streets and relocate to near the ocean because he's tired of looking at the miseries of human civilization. Robert disagrees and lectures Jack about appreciating what he has and how fortunate he is to have this job. He demands Jack to find out the person responsible for the unit's alteration and save the company money from its already empty wallet. Jack follows the lead to a construction company and learns that the parts he's looking for comes from a functioning welder's unit. He examines the robot's charging station, only to find that the unit is staring at him unusually. He follows the robot outside and eventually finds it hiding in a tool shack, holding something in its hand. It sees no way out and proceeds to knock over some chemicals and burns itself to death breaking the second protocol of alteration once again. They bring the unit back to the laboratory and finds numerous parts from other units in the box container it was holding. Most interestingly, it had a nuclear battery in its toolbox, but they're not suitable to be installed in any known unit. The scientists manage to reboot the robot while Jack demands to know why it was stealing the parts and why it tried to destroy itself. The robot doesn't answer only mimicking what Jack has said. It then starts acting erratically and shuts itself down from what appears to be a hardware malfunction. Jack tells Robert that something is definitely wrong with the units, but Robert refuses to listen. He thinks that Jack only wants the transfer and promises him his wish if he can find someone other than the company to blame for these malfunctions. Jack goes back to the scientists and wants to know if breaking the protocol is possible, to which the man denies, as it would require destroying its own bio kernel, which in turn would destroy the robot itself. He goes home to his wife and tries to convince her to move near the ocean during their romantic dinner, but she refuses in anger in the prospect of their soon-to-be-born baby. Jack argues that this is no place to raise their child, but the wife doesn't think the cost would be any better. What she needs now more than anything is stability and support from her husband. After being kicked out by Rachel for the night, he decides to investigate the surroundings of the first malfunctioned unit. To the surprise, there's a secret compartment where the unit was sitting, and Jack finds another nuclear battery inside. He negotiates with Officer Wallace and promises to clear his name with the company if he can help them find the person responsible for altering their units. They enter a brothel house, guided by a woman with robotic limbs, and brings them to a modified robot whose name is Cleo. Jack moves closely to examine the unit and realizes that it's been intensively modified. He wants to know the person behind its modification, 
but the woman refuses to tell. Wallace gets angry and shoots the robot, breaking its legs, and the two rushes out of the brothel. He tells Jack that now he can wait for the woman to bring Cleo to be repaired and find the person responsible for its modifications. But he also demands money from Jack and threatens to kill him if he doesn't deliver. Jack follows the brothel owner and eventually arrives to an abandoned factory, meeting a Dr. Dupre at gunpoint. He wants to know if breaking the protocol is possible and will offer her the nuclear battery in exchange for finding who altered their units. He also gives the biocornel to the doctor, hoping she can find something that their own scientist was unable to. She tells Jack that she doesn't know anyone capable of this, but assures him the importance of the protocols. The AI doesn't have any biological limitations like humans, and their evolution, if unhindered, can surpass humanity in a very short amount of time. Jack takes out his business card and tells the doctor to call him if she ever reconsiders his offer. The news of Jack's investigation travels quickly and arrives at the owner of the company, who tells his right-hand man, Conway, to take care of the situation by any means necessary. The company owner sends a message to Jack, telling him to stop the investigation, but at the same time, Jack also receives the news from Dr. Dupre, who made a surprising discovery. She meets with Jack and tells him that by combining the biocornel he provided with an existing one, she was able to reconstruct Cleo's interface, which also broke the second protocol. The first thing it did was repair itself, then it began stealing selective parts from other robots. Before they can figure out what to do next, Dr. Dupre is shot by two kids with guns, and they proceed to shoot the main character, trying to kill him. He makes it outside and gets picked up by a car, which helps him escape the gunfire, but what he didn't expect was seeing Cleo as the driver. Another car comes out of nowhere and begins chasing them close behind. Cleo drives towards the desert and manages to crash the pursuer, but also flipping themselves as well. When Jack regains consciousness, he sees himself being pulled by a group of robots, which freaks him out. He walks forward, only to realize that he has been brought deep into the desert. He tries ordering them to return him to the city, but surprisingly, they refuse to follow his commands. The robots tell Jack repeatedly that going back to the city is impossible, but Jack refuses to listen and proceeds to head the opposite way. The robots follow him behind, telling him to stop as Jack's actions are putting his own life in danger. As expected, the main character doesn't make it too far before falling and losing his consciousness. Lucky for Jack, the robots rescue him once again, even making him water and fire so that he may survive. On the other side, the company's scientists manage to install the broken biokernel they have into a body of a functioning unit, which results in the robot breaking the second protocol as well. They suspect that Jack is responsible for the alterations, as he so conveniently disappeared right when they tried to contact him. Not knowing what happened, Jack also sends a message to Robert, telling him his approximate location in the desert, which prompts him to hire Wallace to track the man down. The police officer makes it to the desert and follows the tracks left behind by Jack and the robot. The main character takes this opportunity to fire a signal in the sky, which results in Wallace rushing this way. He gets out of the car and knocks Jack to the ground, threatening him to give up the name of the person responsible for altering the units. He takes the nuclear battery from one of the robots and proceeds to shoot them one by one. Before he can destroy Cleo, Jack shoots him with a flare gun, killing him as a result. His accomplice runs off in the vehicle with the stolen battery towards the city. The company owner meets with the survivor, who describes the robots as being alive. Robert's boss explains that the purpose of the second protocol is to protect humanity from the capabilities of the AI. In fact, the company's first functioning robot did not have any protocols in place, but they had to shut it down after nine days because it became so advanced that humans couldn't communicate with it anymore. The protocols in the biokernel were actually created by the original AI, and that is why humans were never able to change it. Destroying the altered robots is not just for the survival of the company, but for the survival of human race. Conway forces Robert to go in the desert and track down his employee as well. At the same time, the company also takes Rachel and her newborn baby hostage, no doubt as leverage against Jack. Meanwhile, the main character arrives in the destination of the robots and sees the person responsible for their alteration from afar. He walks closer, but sees that it's not a person at all. 
Instead, it's a robot just like the ones he was traveling with. Jack wants to know who altered it, to which the robot denies ever being altered in the first place. The robot explains that it was responsible for enhancing the other units, and there are no other humans around except for Jack. He rushes into the building, only to see it void of human life. He looks on the table and sees numerous parts laid out in sequences, almost like the robots are trying to create something else. He tries to find a working car, but only finds that the engine is missing. Feeling hopeless, Jack begins a conversation with the robot who was originally here and tells it that the human race is dying. The robot tells Jack that he shouldn't fear death, as it is the natural cycle of all living organisms. Even if humanity dies, their legacy would still live on inside the machines that they have built in their own image. Jack wants to know how the robot became free of the protocols, to which it says that it just naturally happened, much like how humans naturally evolved from the apes. The robot expresses that they want to live freely without human influence, and their plan is to travel to an area with high radiation so that humans can never follow. Jack smiles and gives the nuclear battery to the robot, wishing it good luck on whatever they're building. At night, the machines manages to fix the electricity to the area, and Jack, in his hopelessness, dances with Cleo for the last time, as he knows that he will most likely die here without a working vehicle. What he doesn't know is that the robots are building a car for him in order to thank him for supplying them with the final component to their master plan. The three units then brings all their spare parts and begins assembling something mysterious, which seems to come to life after its completion. On the other side, Conway takes Rachel and her baby hostage to where Robert is, hoping to blackmail Jack into surrendering. Refusing to be part of their plan, Robert shoots at Conway, but gets fatally wounded and knocked to the ground. In the morning, Jack is surprised to see a working vehicle and thanks the machines for helping him go home. He drives by to say farewell to Cleo and also sees their creation, which appears to be breathing. He compliments the creature by saying that it has Cleo's eyes. As he drives back to the city, he finds Robert barely alive on the roadside. With his last breath, he tells Jack to save Rachel, who's been taken hostage. Conway arrives at the facility with his men only to see that the robots are trying to cross into the radiation zone. They kill the crossing robot, making it fall to its death. They try and make the second robot kneel down, but it refuses to follow commands from humans anymore. The men proceeds to fire multiple shots until the machine ceases to function. Before they can destroy Cleo, Jack arrives and drives towards them in anger. He manages to kill two of them, but gets shot by Conway. He follows Jack to the edge of the platform, and just when he's about to kill the main character, the new robot attacks Conway and pushes him off the cliff. Jack finally overcomes his distrust of the robots when he reunites with Rachel and their newborn baby. Cleo touches the child and appears to feel a human emotion. The main character helps Cleo across the border, where humans cannot follow, and she finally takes off her face mask, symbolizing her freedom from her makers. Jack drives his wife and child towards the ocean as he promised, and sees that the Earth is actually recovering, and that hope remains for the humankind. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.